Cloud. All right. Peace and blessings, everyone. Today is May the 22nd, 2020, and we are in week, is this six or seven? How many oh. times have we been doing this every Friday? Probably seven. We have been doing this Zoom uh, stories in the house every Friday since we have been in quarantine. Uh, every week is a different vibe. We talked about stories. We talked about family. We talked about music. We talked about some of everything. And it's all in the spirit of sharing our arts, uh, specifically as storytellers. But we are in week eight. Eight. Two eight. months. Two, Two months. months. Oh. That's beautiful because I'm thinking about the science of becoming a habit. And it says it takes 21 days to do something. And <laughs> so it takes 21 days to make something a habit. So now that we're in week eight, <laughs> I think we can say this is kind of muscle memory now. It's like, oh, it's Friday. I know what I'm doing Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad to see those who are here. We One of the beautiful things about storytelling is where there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about it. Uh, where it says there's two or more gathered in my name. They say God is there. But that's also a beautiful thing about storytellers. It can be a thousand or it could be two. And it is still just as good if it was a room full of people. Um, because it's the spirit that we do things. We do things honoring our ancestors. We do things honoring our culture and bringing life, keeping our culture alive. Hence the word and the name keepers of the culture. We can't just carry that around there and not do nothing with it. <laughs> you know? And so today... We are going to jump into Black history, um, specifically some individual in Black history. But I want to share first, uh, this is a shirt I won. I went on to an online game a couple weeks ago. It's this group called It's Blackademic. And I think I might have to take my video. Hold on. I may have to take my uh, background off. One moment, please. Because I really want you to see this shirt. Let me go to virtual and take this off. All right. Pause for the cause. All right. So here we go. Wait, now where did my camera go? There we go. All right. It's a group called It's Blackademic, and they put on virtual games every week with black culture, different trivia. So, like, the only thing is they do theirs, they're starting to do theirs on Fridays at seven, at eight. And so today actually was pretty interesting. Today's topic was HBCU trivia. So uh, the day I went on, the theme was vacation Bible school. And so uh, they had all these questions about Bible stories and little church nuances. And, you know, me being raised in church, I knew it all. So I got third place. Out of 75 people nationwide, I was excited. And so they just sent me this shirt today in the mail. Um, it says Blackademic Noun. Oh, wait, my mirror. A person possessing superior knowledge of topics and issues relating to Black people, culture, and history. And the second definition, that's the one I really like. Blackademic, one who is not to be trifled with due to their ability to spit facts without the use of a search engine. <laughs> so, I can't wait to wear this shirt out. So in the spirit of Black History Facts, um, we want to talk about our good brother, Malcolm X, today. Um, my personal experience with Malcolm X, um, I wish I was alive when he was around, but um, this brother... Um, there's a very, very good docu-series on Netflix called Who Killed Malcolm X? And you really get a good inside view of the work he was doing, but also the, the, um, the resistance that was around due to the work that he was doing from not just uh, white people, but from even within the Muslim community and with black community. And it reminds me of how when you have a God-given talent or a message and a, a calling, it's not designed to make everybody feel good. It's not designed to make everybody feel better, but it's designed to hold people accountable. And, you know, we, we, we coined that phrase from him by any means necessary. 
And so um, one, one thing I do like, I was listening to, I have a cassette of Maya Angelou being, being interviewed and she talked about the first time she met Malcolm X and she was, she was protesting. Um, there was a um, organization, she was at like the scholarship banquet, she was younger. This organization was raising money to send uh, black kids to college. And so it was specifically like a white organization. So Maya and her people were out there protesting, you know, don't accept this money from the white man and da 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 and, and everything like that. And Malcolm said to her, and it, it really stuck in my head, he said, sister, we need representation everywhere. And that really stuck out with me because sometimes we get caught up in the movement. Sometimes we get caught up in this blackness and staying woke and we kind of put a label on who's black enough or who's not black enough or you know I'm looking to revoke your black card if you don't know this or if you don't do this and oh you a Christian brother you ain't woke enough but we have to remember that number one we're the cradle of civilization and because when you are the cradle of civilization you're, you're everywhere there, there, there are hints of you there are signs of you everywhere and so it is important that we understand that as we are fighting for liberation, we have to fight on all fronts. You know, Shirley Chisholm said, if they don't offer a seat at the table, bring a chair. And so we have to understand that me, Mama Oni, Sister Birdie, Josh, Mama Nzinga, Brother David, wherever we are in our communities, in our audiences, wherever we are, we are fighting there. And we need that representation. I, I can even think of, based off what he said, uh, Sister Mae Jemison, the first woman, first black woman to go into outer space. And the only reason she said she made it into outer space was because of the sister that she saw on Star Trek as a little girl. That's right. And the lady on Star, I forgot her name, but she almost quit that job when there was that controversy against her kissing William Shatner. She almost quit that job. And had she quit that job, May Jemison would have never seen her on TV to make that an actual reality and make black history. So had not she been on that show with all those white people representing us and showing us in another light, we never know who we are impacting. So that representation really, really matters. I have a record. I'm going to play that later, Mama Oni, for the sake of the time, if we have time. Uh, some of the words are from Brother Malcolm X. But that's my story with Malcolm X. I remember that the brother told me that representation matters. So whenever I see a black person, I'm not hating, but I'm rejoicing and I'm praying that they're representing us well. We do have to hold them accountable. When we see them represented, we still have to hold them accountable. But let's celebrate and embrace us being in all of these spaces all over the world, doing our life callings, <coughs> representing our people and keeping our culture. Thank you. Thanks, um, getting applesauce or yogurt? Thank okay, you, thank you, thank you all for that. Um, you made me think of a quote, and I think we should all always bring quotes that are relevant to the mm -hmm. culture. And I, uh, I think her name is Abrams, and she, she's the mayor. She might be the mayor of Atlanta. Is no, she, she the mayor? For, she ran for governor. Thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. Nitsinga. Yes. She ran for governor. Stacey. And I just wrote down a quote and they were interviewing her and saying, well, why are you running? You know, you're not going to win. And she says, well, I'm running for the little girls who are following me. I'm running for the little girls who are seeing me run. Yeah. yeah. You, and she said, you can't, you can't be, be it if you don't see it. That's right. So it ties in just to what you said, Paul. And um, yeah, so I wrote it down. I said, I didn't know I would share it tonight, but I mm. wrote it down because I thought it was really important. And that's why our little girls and our youngsters, our little boys, they need to see us. They need to see us telling the stories and continuing with the culture and carrying it on in the oral tradition that we do so well. So um, we're gonna hear your Malcolm X tape later. And 
All uh, right, now I'm going to mute everybody and we're going to listen to Mama Birdie. Mama Birdie, you ready with your, with your poem? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. I'm going to do a poem by Langston Hughes. And the name of the poem is Desire. Desire to us was like a double death, swift dying of our mingled breath, evaporation of an unknown strange perfume. Between us quickly in a naked room. That's it. <laughs> That's Langston, Langston News. For the undaunted, for that undaunted love, yes. He will hit you quick with no, just the name a few of words. Is desire. Awesome. I love it. Thank you. Anybody else have something from Langston they want to share? Well, since the little girl, she's still around? Yes. David Pringle, he's still alone, but he's you know, he, he, he's busy with the little Leah, and so he's listening. They're listening, and they're watching. Okay. My Still people. Here. My people. The night is beautiful, and so are the faces of my people. The stars are beautiful, and so are the eyes of my people. Beautiful also is the sun. Beautiful also are the souls of my people. Ashe. And that's Langston. My people. Short and to the point. <laughs> yes. I hope okay, good. I oh, can't hear you. Can't hear you. I'm in a group called Westchester Community Performers, and we just did a readers' theater on the works of Langston Hughes. Uh, Langston Hughes also wrote about a woman named Madam, who lived in mm -hmm. Harlem and had a lot of sass. Mm. And, uh, Madam and the landlord. Madam and the rent man. And Madam and her us uh, her um. And the war and the army man. And so we did a theater piece where we all portrayed different madams. But uh, at the end, we uh, also did this poem. And this poem is being recited on the DVD, on the same DVD, Karima Ahmed, who is a fabulous storyteller in Rochester, New York. She also has some books out, published author books on Br'er Rabbit. And she recited this poem on this DVD. We'll see it in a couple of weeks, not tonight, but I'll read it to you. It's very short. It's very uh, short. And although we're talking about Malcolm, I know Malcolm what loved and read Langston Hughes. Who has it? It's mm. called Still Here. I've been scarred and battered. My hopes, the wind unscattered. Snow has frizzed me. Sun has baked me. Looks like between them, they done tried to make me stop laughing, stop loving, stop living. But I don't care. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite Langston. Ah, I'm That's still crazy. here. Ah, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. That sound like your own mantra there. <laughs> I'm still here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, did anyone want to share anything else? Thank you, David, for the hand clap and Emery. Well, some of us are here. We have a small group tonight. This has probably been our smallest because I think, Joshua? Yeah, I have a, some, uh, something from Langston to read. Okay. Wow. Okay, so uh, I'm going to read this one i actually remember this one i well i remember slightly reading it um yeah uh luckily um you know paul helped me out with the with some of his work here but like i said i'm surprised i found this poem and i remember my grandma 
read to me a few times because she was a reader. She was a big fan of uh, poems and whatnot. She had a huge library of poems and all of that. Um, her favorite was Nikki Giovanni. I met her actually. Wonderful lady, wonderful woman. Um, but I'm going to read Langston Hughes' Jazzonia. I don't know if you've heard this. Yeah. So, O Silver Tree, O Shining Rivers of the Soul, in a Harlem cabaret, six long headed jazzes play. A dancing girl whose eyes are bold lifts high a dress of silk and gold. O Singing Tree, O Shining River of the Soul, where Eve's eyes in the first garden, just a bit too bold, was Cleopatra gorgeous in a gown of gold. O Shining Tree, O silver rivers of the soul, in a whirling cabaret, six long-headed jazzes play. And yeah, I remember my grandma used to read this, and my grandfather was in a jazz band, so it That's beautiful. I think that's from a series he wrote called Ask Your Mama. It might be taken from that, uh, Ask Your mm -hmm. Mama. Yeah, yeah. It's a wonderful uh, poetry, uh, uh, arranged to jazz music. Mm. Ask your mama. Mm. We supposed wow. to be talking about Malcolm when we getting all on 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 mm -hmm. Langston. See, we, we just let it first. flow. You let it flow. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Josh. Well, Malcolm loved his people. He did. He loved. Yes, he did. People. And he stood yes, up he for did. people by any means necessary. Yes, he did. <laughs> up for his people. Right. He's the song of the black man. Oh, is it okay if I freestyle? Go ahead. He's a song of the black man. Rising, rising, Nubian king. Rising, rising. Do they know who they are yet? We come out of chains, but we came from crowns, from a land afar. Can they hear the souls of the ancestors that we're free? We're free in our minds and our hearts. Don't try to pull us down. Don't try to destroy us because you never can destroy black. Black is in everything. Black is in the sun that shines. Black is in oil. Black is in gold. And if it be told, I'll stand till I die. Black is real. Black is so black is the highest, the best, the blessed, and in everything, even white. So, and no one should ever try to put a black man down. Let's gather, brothers and sisters. You know your place. Come on, this we are part of the human race. Stand, black man, stand. Rise, black man. Rise, black woman. Rise, black children. Ashe. That was just a little freestyle. Ashe. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Nzinga. Thank Whoa. you, Nzinga. Thank Beautiful. you. Give thanks. Yes, yes. Well, before we move on, I invited Mary Stewart back in. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I don't know who Mary, does anyone know Mary Stewart? The name sounds familiar, but. I wish they would speak up. Maybe they don't know how to do it. Sometimes people be challenged. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> they don't know how to do it. OK. All right, well, um, what we'd like to do is make a move forward. And I really wanted, I was really hoping we had some um, new storytellers. What we do, we have Birdie, Mama Birdie, and we have Joshua, Brother Joshua. So we do. Uh, I'm gonna leave Mary Stewart on and hoping that that's really who she is. Um, Cause we don't wanna, alienate anyone, but we just have to be careful about who we bring in as well. Uh, true, so true. should I leave her in the, in the, in the circle, in the square? Uh, it's, 
It's, it's been, been about 30, 30 minutes, minutes now. We haven't heard you since. All right, so I'm going to remove her. I don't think it's a real person. Okay. And if it is, she'll come back. Yeah. Okay, this time I'd like to share the screen and talking about all that blackness, Ninzinga. Oh, you got me thinking about the tall storyteller, Kala Jojo. <laughs> And if you don't know Kala Jojo, you can experience now. And I think this is going to be of interest to you, my friend Joshua, because you get to see Mama Oni's videotaping. <laughs> my expertise. Can't wait. This was filmed. This was filmed. I'm gonna share the screen in a minute. This was filmed in 2000. Uh, That's two zero zero zero. Woo! Okay, and I'm going to share the screen, and you're going to get to see Kala Jojo talk about the importance of storytelling. So everybody, you've settled down and ready. You got your bathroom break. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to attend to the baby. She's having a fit. Oh, David Pringle said he's had to attend the baby. She's having a fit. I'll catch y'all next week. All right. All right, David and Emery. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank Peace, you. Peace, brother. Be safe and well. Yeah. yeah. Nice meeting you, David. Yes. Yeah. Nice meeting you, David. Okay. So this is the video here. Oh, I have to screen share. Hold on. Okay. This is the beginning of the video. What sister? Which one? I can't come now. Talk to her. You can see it? Not yet. No, we just see the uh, your menu, the file, the window with the file in it. You see it now? Not yet. Oh, no, I think. Huh? Just a minute. No. How do I do this, um, how do I do this, Kala? Kala, how do I do the, um... Kala Jojo's on? Yes. Oh, hi, Kala. Where is he at? Wait a minute, how do I do this, um... Kala Jojo's not on. Well, I'm trying to do it. How do I do it, Paul? Oh, you talking to me. I I, I think... Um, That's okay. Kyla. There he is. All okay. right, so let me start from the beginning. Make sure your... Are your settings on where we can hear your video? I don't know. This is my first time doing this. We gonna find out. Tell me if you can hear it. Well, it didn't start yet. Come on, come on. It says I'm screen share. You see it now? We see it. Um... Not yet. Come on. Do you see the oh. button that says play? Yeah, yeah now we yeah. want all right, so let me just go back and get it. Yeah, it was just playing earlier. I saw him sitting yeah, down I know, in the chair. But I don't know what happened. It's trying to play my DVD player. It's not in the DVD player. It's in my file. So I know that much. Let me get out of here. Um, I would hit the X on the right in both windows. Hold on. If I hit the X, I'm going to hit... I'm going to X y'all out, so wait a minute. Um, stop, share. Okay, got you. Here All it right. is. It's right here. You see that? All right, you got to share it again. Oh. All right, I got to share it again. All right. All right, there it is. All right, I see it now. Okay, there's the file. We see you clicking on the file. Okay, it's going to come up.
Mm-hmm. You see it now? It turned black. Nope. Uh, I see a black screen behind it, but nothing is showing. It Not yet. Not yet. Do you need to minimize this file window that has all the files in it? Y'all don't see it. I see it. You minimize this window that has the files in it. The folder. Minimize that. Oh, minimize okay. minimize right. that. Hold Maybe on. that'll you were just at it. Y'all don't see the screen turn black? No, minimize the file the fo the window that has the, the three files in it. Yeah, minimize that. Click that. Well, where'd it go? Do you hear Linda Doss? Nope. No, no. Nope. I don't know how to do it then. Uh, you just try to minimize that folder right where the arrow was. I don't even know where it went now. Hold on. Oh. Okay. Right. Do you see it now? You got to share your screen again. You got to share your screen. Okay, well, I'm going to take it off and just see if I can do this. I'm gonna stop this recording, hold on. Okay. It's for me, recording pause and all that kind of stuff. Um, you want me to try again? Yeah, just go, if you can, just pull up your YouTube and your yeah. internet browser. Yeah, maybe I'll try again and see, hold on. Um, can somebody- You guys can talk. Yes, can uh, somebody tell me? My favorite uh, quote by Malcolm is Seize the Time. Does anybody else have a favorite quote by Malcolm? Oh my goodness. The chickens have uh, come home to roost. Yeah, yeah okay. chickens come home to roost. Okay. Um, oh my if goodness. If you have no critics, then you have no success. Ah, ah. Likes that, I likes that. Anybody else? I think is it if you can't get a seat at the table, you're at the wrong at the wrong table, or you're at the wrong restaurant. You're the, or you're the meal. Um, I've heard that. I've, I've heard if you don't have a seat at. I heard if you don't you don't have a seat at the te the table, then you're you're um the, the meal. That right, about I mean, Mama Oni. I don't think that's the one. We welcome all of our no, friends who are watching the Storytelling Festival. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you see it? It's streaming live on yeah. uh, the internet. Yeah, we can, we can see it. We can hear it. Okay, well, hold on. I'll go back. I put little. Put L I T T L E. That's where it said the whole word little. Yeah. Uh, anybody else do they? Oh, you uh, just gave it. We, okay, can you see it now? You see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay, my Malcolm uh, quote is uh, Plymouth Rock fell on us. We didn't fall on Plymouth Rock. You got it. Right. Yeah. So you see a little red? Y'all ready to see Linda in action? Yep, we're ready. Let's Make that screen All right, screen let's there. go. Let's see if it'll play. It'll play. All right. What Get ready. 
opened up that door and went inside. She didn't have to go far until she saw that big bad wolf in Big Mama's clothes in Big Mama's bed. Little Rez said, Big Mama, you don't look so good. <laughs> that wolf said, oh, Little Red, you know I don't feel so good. Tell you the truth, I'm kind of blue. Even though it's sunny outside, day after day, I stay locked up in my room. <laughs> Should have an opportunity for redemption. 
big band wolf to group therapy lessons. <laughs> Conversation about that. <laughs> we can record it, so we're gonna watch okay. it. <laughs> okay, that was our that am I muted? No. no. Okay. That was our first time at trying to show a video and screen. So everybody, thank you for your patience. What I see why she don't want you to take that story. What happened? You see why she don't want me right. <laughs> you would have took it and ran with that. <laughs> I, listen, listen. <laughs> I would tear that one up. Okay. I mean, that's a that's a sure hit anytime. Yeah, but I think what's so fascinating is that we had the music. You know, mm -hmm. we we had the music. You didn't have to make up anything. That's all of our music. Yep. That's right. You know, Isn't that bri that was that's the beauty of it. Now you can't make a paragraph out of stuff they they singing now. <laughs> You can't. Ain't no substance. I was just telling Josh that I was like, you know, we can't say we can't tell this story to any children, yet alone millennials. Like, oh, no. mm -mm. unless you was raised by old school, you probably won't know some of those songs. What, you notice she had the perfect audience. Number one, uh, you can hear oh, it. Those oh, were yeah. those were grandparents. Oh, yeah. Those were adults. Those were yeah. Adults. yeah. And and did you notice the sink in the corner covered with the Black History flag? <laughs> I saw the quilt. Yes. Her like quilt. quilt was gorgeous. Yeah. What happened to Birdie? Oh. She might have to leave. Okay. I'm gonna mute everybody because it's only six of us on here. Oh yeah. So that how'd was, you like it, Nzinga? Oh, uh, that was a, that was a nice take on it, but I know you could, I know you could hit it up. <laughs> I know you, you could. Hit that you up. know I could hit it up. Well, listen, quiet as it's kept, I wrote it out, but I just hold you, it. You're being recorded. Please remember that you are recorded. <laughs> you're going to get to see Brother Blue in action. I had to take. I have so much on the floor. But I had to get to certain really good pieces. Brother oh Blue is an ancestor, and he is one is. of the founding fathers of storytelling in America. Everyone loves Brother Blue. He's a butterfly. I used to call him my daddy. So next week, we're going to hear from him, um, Ramona King, Brother Blue, Karima Amin. Uh, we have Teju. Teju is off the hook. Teju, the storyteller, he's from Wisconsin. We have Mother Mary Carter Smith on here. Uh, Linda Goss is at the end and she's talking to everybody. So please, you know, invite more people and they'll get to actually see Brother Blue and experience the, the wonderful world of Brother Blue uh, about storytelling. Um, all our storytellings are really inspirations for us all. Okay, uh, Nzinga, I unmuted you. Yes, can can Ron and if we have time for DC to do something? Yeah, we're not on no big. Uh, I'm not on no big strict schedule. Sure, I wouldn't never close out without hearing from them. They took the yes. Thank you for uh, reminding me, but I didn't forget them. I just wanted to, you know, wrap up this DVD and get some feedback from you all. So right. thank you so much for the feedback. All right. So who's next, Ron or DC? DC. Ron. Ron. Who, who, uh, Ron had his hand up. Um, 
want to say is um, you are a very creative person. You have a great imagination. I think that you can put something together similar to what the sister did, yeah. a different story maybe, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and use use the music in the same way, but different music, you understand know what I'm saying? So I'm going to challenge you to create a story similar like that, okay? With the music. I'm challenging you because I know you can do it. All yeah. right. All right? <laughs> Maybe the three little pigs. Yeah. You can do it. I thought I, she was going to do, when she said the, uh, the wolf was chasing her around mm -hmm. and Bill showed up, I thought she was like, shotgun! <laughs> you, you can do that too. You should, all of us should, to think about Africanizing or soul soulfulizing these storytellers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. cool. mm -hmm. yeah. We can all do something funky like that. Maybe we can have something together for family day. I really? think a good way to do it is just put a list of all the songs and as you read them, it might trigger a storyline in your head. Right. Oh, oh was, Ron, you're so oh, kind. Tony, there there he was, was a um, now, he can think like that. There's a um a, a brother um at a theater group, uh, Mitchell Mitchell uh, Mitchell and Robinson Theater Group, uh, teenagers, oh, 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 yeah. and um, they did they oh, did yeah. a um, they did a a, a play yeah. called um, Snow White and the Seven Homies. I mean, <laughs> you played like drums in that, didn't you? Yeah, like yeah. Uh -huh. That's when I, I first think you went to one of their shows. Did you go go to one of their theater shows? That's when I first saw you. You were playing drums for that little uh, play. Yeah, yeah. That was in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember. So what happened to them? They're not doing anything anymore? Um, well, Robinson, he, I think I think he passed away. Someone told Aww. me he had passed away. No, he didn't. He was also I a, a uh, professional actor as well, too. Are you talking about Bruce Robinson? Yeah. No. That still living? Be. You still living? Yeah. Yes. Somebody gave me some yes, some offbeat him information. Two months ago, I know him very well. Yeah. Yes, I used to go to that theater all the time. Yes. They, they had a theater down on Germantown Avenue, up in Germantown. That's where right. I first I saw you, Ron. You were playing right drums. There. I went to that show. Okay. And that's yeah, when we, we first we met, and I I'll, saw I'll you playing drums. Mm -hmm. I'll check on my buddy. Oh, um, and um, I did. I did talk to Lamont. Did you get to talk to him? I only text with him. What's yeah, happening I, I, with I did, him? I did, I did talk with him. He wanted to, um, you know, take a sabbatical. And he wasn't into, you know, talking to a lot of people. He just wanted to be, be himself and, and get, him, get his head together. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and then get back into the flow. He okay? Because I know he has um, some health issues. And I did talk. I did text him, but yeah. Yeah. That's they, he, I, I know he he's on. Every, I didn't know it. Everybody else knew, it, but I didn't know it. he was on dialysis. But he had been on dialysis for years. He told me. He wow. thought I knew, but I did oh. not know. You know. Uh -huh. Other than that, he's he's doing okay. I uh, Lamont to him and him on Dixon. The phone. Yeah, Lamont Dixon. For those of you who don't know, Napalm the Bomb. He's a really good yeah. poet. I talked him into joining Coatsy years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a script called Battle of the Dozens, where it's, I'm the queen uh, and he's the king. And we, when email first came out, we were exchanging all these dozens on each other. And it's hysterical. And it's all done in rhyme. We had people voting on it. So I was trying to get him to get together so we could do something like that, like for Leeway or for the French Festival. So Lamont, um, he was a Coatsy member too. So um, yeah, thanks, Ron. Is there anything yeah, I, you want to him. share? Huh? Is there anything else you want to say before we move on? Um, just good to hear from everybody. And with son, my you. son Paul, I have not forgotten. I've been so busy. This is my weeks of, fi of finals. Bro, I know, know you done retired back in, and you I'm started back in, back in school. Yeah, back you busy in school. doing you busy you know doing know class that? and you busy doing right. nothing. I get I have, it. When my dad, when he first well, retired from the post office. They said, what you want to do the first year? He's like, I'm going to sit on the yeah. porch and throw yeah. rocks at the mailman. 
<laughs> so, only tell him he don't know about that honey honey to do list. Mm. <laughs> so, oh, I've um, heard of it. That list get, never goes away. I'm, I'm I'm living it. Okay. I, you know these it's women okay. treacherous. It's all good. You know two kinds all of women. Good. Yeah, but it's all good. Uh, yeah, you yeah that story you told at, at the um at, at at the um the um the um museum. That that story had me going, man. Which one are you talking going. about? Oh, come on, y'all, DC. You talking What's about what I did at Shades? The two kinds oh, of women. Oh, so two kinds yeah. of women. Talking about Paul, okay? Like they yeah. treacherous. Yeah. <laughs> DC. Yeah, anything. I'm here. Yeah, DC. I'm here. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, Paul. I sent you this uh, May the 9th, I think. I was having a moment. Uh, with all this stuff going on about uh, the Aubrey case, and yeah. then, um, uh, and then I our see sister, it. and then our sister who uh, was subsequently uh, taken oh, yes. as well. Oh I do uh, that. And yeah. so I, I was, I was just feeling it. I said, you know, I'm gonna send this to Paul because I think he can, I think he can relate to this. Uh -huh. But it's, it's another, I don't want to say chapter, but it's another piece in a poem that I thought was done called Apologies, Black Lives Matter. So um, I'll start. I'm sorry, Mrs. Brown, we could find no justice for your son. What, didn't you know that in this America, this is how it's done? No matter what the findings, this jury won't convict. The powers that come into play answer to a totally different edict. Their actions quite predictable, not even smooth or slick. Another black man out of line got a justice thinking, quick. He didn't do as he was told to move along and get out of the street. Maybe he wasn't feeling that directive, unafraid to take the heat. Why not a gun, a stun gun or a nightstick? Why so many bullets fired from his gun? Maybe Officer Wilson wanted to ensure that he'd be the victorious one. I'm sorry, Mrs. Martin. We could find no justice for your son. Should have probably told you he wouldn't be the only one. Because we've been living with, with, living with this lie, an alternate universe of sorts, where justice depends on who it is and who's sitting in the courts. The privileges are such that only those with the right shade of skin have access. Please know that there's still so much hate and ignorance wrapped up in this mess. No matter your accomplishments, if they want to bring you down, they'll use a bullet or a soundbite from a washed up starlet who's long since lost her crown. I'm really very sorry that with our history of oppression, we have no more to offer you, but we're too busy finding the next new thing that we can plug into. I'm sorry that our young black men refused to keep their place. All you did was teach them that they're a member of the human race. I'm sorry, Mrs. Garner. We could find no justice for your man. Selling Lucy's on the corner was no grand terrorist plan. If it only took one cop, a single chokehold to eventually bring him down, then what were the other seven doing? Just idly seven standing around? No matter how many times he told them that he could not breathe, wouldn't loosen their grip, wouldn't let up, wouldn't ease. How many of our black sons will continue to die this way? Accidents, coincidence, and victims of circumstance, you say? Men are dying, families are crying, won't be easy silencing them. Every man born from woman matters to his kin. And then my new entry, apologies continued, I'm sorry, Mrs. Aubrey, there can be no justice for your son, but didn't you know that in this America, this is how it's done? In this America, justice is a very slippery slope. In this America, truth is the lottery and the crapshoot is hope. I'd like to think that this America would just choose to grow up, stop clinging to what's trending, attributing its ills to a generational hiccup, I'd like to think that justice for all truly means what it does say, but in this America, just us are those with power and all else fades away. As we approach another day, Mother's Day at that, I pray for the unnecessary loss of the son that you begat. I pray the hearts and minds of those who see our sons as less will look at their own sons and imagine them in burial dress. Because until it happens to you and yours, it's just a story you repeat. Until your son is gunned down while jogging on any random street, you will never understand that this America we live in is a very different place. It's a place where you can still take shots and chances at conviction when it comes down to race. Mm. Yeah. 
DC in the house. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. just uh, never fails. Never fails. Yeah, I go out house. and I, and they just keep reeling me back in. I mean, I, I mean, just, you know, you ain't going nowhere. You can't help it. <laughs> God given talent. I got I got to send it to you, Paul. Oh, yes. <laughs> I need to add to my collection. There's always room on the show. I got to send it to you. Uh, this book is is a couple years in the making, but oh. it's it's finally here. Wow. My new child, number eight. <laughs> oh, oh. You claiming taxes on them? <laughs> I, I'm telling you, man, oh man, oh man, oh man. You get an extra $500 on your stimulus check for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Um, great, great, great social commentary, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. What's the can, we all, can, we, can we always count on you for a, a uplifting consciousness piece? Oh, certainly. Because that's right. where my head's at. All right. Okay. I, I'm not your roses or red violets or blue kind of poet. That's not me. Okay. okay. No, I like that. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I, can, I can drop some. I got to dig out my books, my chat books, because I have some to drop. Yeah. But it's so nice that um, I think that's the purpose of poetry, you know? Yeah, like I think we can get into said, places we must where, be a reflection of our times. And people will open themselves up to the idea of what you have to say without feeling confrontational. Confrontational, mm -hmm. right? Because right. it's a poem. Yeah, right. but it, you know, so you get to say you get to say a lot of things that would normally cause a fight. <laughs> of course, of course. I would I would love just us to come back and just do our poetry. Yeah, I have some some little something something. I think we all do. I, mean, yeah. I got a little. I, I got a little something, something too. You got something tonight? Huh? Do I don't think we have night? time tonight, though. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm next having, time around. I don't well, have no bedtime, Yeah, we we usually you know wind down at nine, but we're not stuck in no you know it's not rigid. It's not a rigid process. Right, um, right. And we want everybody to, to have a voice and, and share. If you're feeling it, we want to feel it too. So yeah, yeah, we want to feel it. it too, girlfriend. That's right. Bring it. You know, what you got, Ron? Um, this is his first time. Remember he used to say that in all the open mic sets, the poetry yeah. sets in Philly? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know, DC, but did you ever see in the Company of Poets? I used to be in the Company of Poets. And no, said, uh, the most majority of what I've seen in spoken word in Philadelphia has been so riddled with profanity oh, no. that it just made me sick. Yes. A yeah. um, lot of really talented people, and it was totally unnecessary. I mean, how many times you got to call a woman to be? I mean, uh, thank you. I mean, thank you don't have to keep saying it. Um, my sentiments exactly. Yeah. So well, that's yeah. really what I strive in my poetry to not use that kind of language. Right. Because I think that if you spend a little time with the English language, you can use it to your advantage and not have to, you know, denigrate people in that way. Right. right. No, I agree. I hate profanity. I was in a group called um, in the Company of Poets. It was Philly's first and finest female spoken word ensemble. Okay. And yeah, it was me, uh, Pat McLean, Nish Pugh, Debbie Wright, and we all had our tags. Let me know when you're ready, Ron. Okay. But we told uh, we told a lot of um, you know women this you know poetry mm -hmm. to support women and girls. Okay. And we did work poetry workshops at mm -hmm. uh, shelters. We also mm -hmm. performed for uh, the Coalition Women Against Rape, the conference mm -hmm. that they had in Philly. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that ensemble uh, going out together. Um, and for, I was story poet, warrior poet, conscious poet. Diva poet and wisdom poet. Okay. okay. Diva poet dropped out early. She was the first to drop out the group because she was the diva. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you know, but other than that, we had a great time. And it was, uh, you, yeah. your poetry reminds me of the type of poetry we did. Mm. Well, and I think yeah. it's good as poets to speak for the people, speak for those, well, my, give my voice to those who don't have it. My introduction to poetry was Gil Scott Heron. At, oh, thank um, you. At the McGonagall Hall. Oh, yes. oh my God. I was yeah. In, yeah. I just found out who Mary Stewart was. Who's that? 
I knew I knew that name. One of my students' grandmothers. Oh my God. Come on. I'm like, I know this name and she writes poetry. Ah well, she, she said to she talk. if she if she Well no, poetry. she said on her she was trying to do it on her phone and they kept saying the host will let you in soon, but it wasn't turning over to like let her in. So that's why in. we didn't see video or audio from her. But she just mm-hmm. called me. So I told her next Friday I would walk her on like step by step so she can get on. But oh my, I'm like, I know Barry Studer. But she's one of my students' grandmas. So when I see her, I just say, hey, grandma. I don't call her by her name. Oh, <laughs> oh that's great. Well, we, let her in, we let her in twice, but you have to. Yeah, know. but she's she's trying to, she's she got to be, how old is she? She's uh, oh, my age. She's older, but she's raising those grandchildren. So she she gets frustrated. Like, maybe this technology, I just miss the best. I'm just frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to show her how to Sorry. use her grandson's Chromebook for Zoom so he can go to class. Okay. So uh, she said next Friday. I told her we'll get on a little early to walk her through. That it would be she, great. She that had been great. telling me uh, at one of the parent was it the, it wasn't the parent she, when when we first went to quarantine quarantine. Well, no, it was a parent-teacher conference last semester. She was telling me that she does poetry mm-hmm. and she had been writing yeah. stuff. And I was like, well, you need to come to keep it at a culture. I'm like, these are people from your style. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I told her about this, but uh, she's like, Mr. Best, I'll probably be working. So she's been off on Fridays. And so today she had called oh. me about her grandson's computer and I told her about it. So that, I'm like, I know that name. So next week we'll have a run. Uh-huh. Yeah, because you have to be careful, you know. No, I understood. And that's why I was like, somebody's probably on and may or, they don't know how to use it, but it could be somebody pretending to be somebody don't know how to use it. And yeah, you know, you know, people got time to be evil now too. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, how about that? gotta think about that too. Yeah, some that's people got that. issues. And so better safe know. than sorry. We, we took her off to be safe and then she called and followed up. So it was fine. Okay, okay, great. I, I guess I'm ready. Okay. What are you doing, Ron? Uh, I have a piece. Um, I came a long ways. Um, there was one particular um, time in my life I was not proud of. Um, are you trying to play a music? No, no music, no. Oh, okay, good. Okay, great. So, All right. Cause, okay. I'm just, just going to do the poem straight draw. I'm not going to mute everybody because as long as we're quiet, right. you right. know, I don't think it'll interfere. Yeah, this, 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 this poem is titled Pieces of a Dream. Um, How long is the dream, uh, uh, Ron? What? How oh, long is this long. dream? It's not that long. Okay. okay. I've been sitting for two little... hours. I want to stand up. Okay. In the malevolent world of sugar coated treats, Young black men had lost in ghetto streets. Having no conscience of time, having no conscience of reality defeats, desperation, a life of crime, a chance, a kinghood elites inside a craving to survive with the gangster jobs they do live, renouncing morality to contrive, no honor among malefactor to give. Their minds, storage of room revealing thoughts, drifting great traces as it seems, shifting black faces, pieces of a dream. Life in a a malfessant world of cotton candy and ghetto rag dolls elusive of life so dandy. Young black men at lost in slums, their avenues, dark street corners, their source of revenues, having no conscience of time, having no purpose for life to rhyme, only hopes of Queenhood, court jester, having male chauvinistic dominance, dominance to fester, monetary oasis in exchange for moral reprieve, drifting great traces as it seems, pieces of a dream. And a perfidious world of graffiti and computer games, childhood addiction of walls, unreadable names, young black men with promises amputated by their peers, told lies with constants by the system castrated, pushed from existence. No one cares as to why some young black men 
swarm the undergrowth as parasitic creatures exploiting without remiss, maintaining control, electric kiss, evolving ego, fancy free on a rail line. Next stop, the, gall the gallows tree. Their minds barren philosophy, they, they themselves do not believe, ignoring death in themselves, of themselves, nor, not able to grieve. Drifting black faces as it seems, shifting black faces, pieces of a dream. And a miscreant world of the latest vogue in sweatsuits and sneaker explains predatory <laughs> mischief wrapping ghetto humankind in chains. Young black women trapped on islands of gloom, given are they the emptiness, told are they the lies, exploited, pushed into stagnation, raped are they by heartlessness, no one cares to why young black women cling to the floors of the jungle, death stalking creatures, antagonists to what is good, lovers of evil's mass, purchasing tombstone of glass, their minds storage, a closet revealing evil mark, revealing what's hidden in shadows in the dark, drifting gray, gray faces as it seems, shifting black faces, pieces of a dream. In a world of malcontent, given choice between wrong and right, eliminating the fat, our choice on sight. Some young rebellious young black men and women to the fat to keep the score on how to kick to the curb all that's moral and more. They don't give a damn about you or I. This a reality you better accept that they're hurting you and themselves ain't shy. Receiving short-lived gratification becomes a declaration of independence, a national anthem, emancipation, shifting great face, shifting great traces, as it seems, shifting black faces, pieces of a dream. All right. Yeah. I don't know when you wrote that, but that just seems like it's it's appropriate for the day. Yes, it is. I, I, well, this this here was back during the eighties. No, ain't, ain't much change, brother. Uh -uh. I know, For real. I know, I know. Ain't much change. And this, but this here is a small percentage. Oh, because yeah. the majority of our young black men and women are doing the right thing. This is just oh, some of those who are who are caught up in, you know. Timeless grief. I don't. Know. I, don't I, know. I don't know. I'm looking at it from uh, from from my end. From your end. I, from my end, I'm seeing them at ten and eleven years old. Uh, yeah. Uh, and they are not. Yeah. Even given the qu equipment to do well. Yeah. You know that's true. this whole mm -hmm. distance learning thing, a hysterical joke. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm. I wrote this when I was. Um, Why do you feel Costa. that way, DC? Because our children don't <laughs> learn from TV. Mm. TV was only ever meant to um, amuse us and entertain right. us. Right. It was never really meant to teach us anything. And and when it started to teach us something, we got into video games. You know, when when people figured out that Sesame Street was actually educational, then they got us into games and so you know when you look at how these kids they they've given eighty thousand of these computers out to our children mm. and if if 30 percent of them sign on every day i'm exaggerating right right and how many of these computers and if they had these computers why weren't they given to us before now before. right when we could actually have taught them what to do how with to them. use it yes yeah. yeah so i just really don't think the system is designed to they, they really are trying to educate our children i, I don't think so uh, I, do, no. I do agree with you um dc um because i know when when i was coming up only and i were coming up in the, in the philadelphia school system um at that time whites were starting to leave the public school system mm -hmm. in droves the same way they were leaving the neighborhoods in droves because yeah. of because we, we were there yeah and with them they took all the music programs the art programs mm -hmm. because when i was going to school in third grade i started taking music lessons trouble. we all did we you all know did. what i mean I, you know and and a lot of that 
and not just that, you know, school orchestra, school band, all the way through high school, right. art, trades. Mm -hmm. um, they closed down all the trade. The only trade school that is left is Bach and uh, public school, uh, trade school. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they raped that yeah. like there's yeah. no tomorrow as far as the trades are concerned. It took them out of there. Mm -hmm. you know and then they and, tie our uh, hands they don't want us to drill our kids we all got drilled in in multiplication tables right I mean, they we're not allowed to do that yeah. no, we're not allowed mother, to give them spelling uh -huh. spelling uh lists and spelling tests every week we had spelling words we had spelling tests every week you know and that's why yeah. they can't hold the conversation because they don't know any words did they, they know cuss did they words, take, though. Well, they know those aren't, words. but those aren't, you know. I'm just saying, saying they, they know, it, and, and then the thing of it is they're trying to put in this whole rap curriculum. Everything has to be like a rap or hip hop, and that's fine if you're that's on a their way of getting their attention, and, and I appreciate that. Right. However, right. you know, you, you got to go back old school. Some of right. this stuff is just too hip, and yeah. you, miss, you miss the point, you know. That's my. That was. That's where and, I was heading. Yes. This. this it's okay, but you, you need to give them other things too. You know, along with that rap, you need to give them some Shakespeare. You know, you need to let them hear the sounds of poetry. Mm -hmm. I read poetry to my kids every day. The first couple months, they thought I was crazy, but by by the time um, we got into January, they were begging to hear. Oh, Miss mm -hmm. Murphy, tell us a poem. Give us, give us a poem. I know you got something. You know, can we make up a poem together? Can we write a poem right. together? Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, they they have to be immersed in the thing that you want them to learn, and they don't. They're more interested in testing them and testing them right. and testing them, and then testing them some more, and then testing you, and then testing you to make sure that you tested them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are they, teach, wanna, are they teaching know. them uh, in, anyway? Um, that's interesting that's because that. I offered I offered a free Dunbar program to the Dunbar school, mm -hmm. and I did a, a workshop with all the children. Mm -hmm. The school is called Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Yeah, I know. And Dr. Simpkins and Dr. Margaret Kenny, mm -hmm. they brought me in. Those two principals. Okay. But this new principal. Oh no. Mm -hmm. She is like ignoring. And the whole thing, I mean, Shakespeare's fine, but yeah. no Dunbar, no some Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. parents used to recite him to us, his works. When it, you know, I, I just think integration messed up the whole black community. Well, I personally. think Dunbar in particular, in particular, was the te the the teaching ground for a lot of Temple University's teachers. I mean, they when they when they came out of out of school, they went right to Dunbar Elementary. Right. And that right. was their training ground. And those teachers were good. Right. right. They were good. But then yeah. you've got all these intellects who've come in now. Yeah. And they have decided that, you know, they have all these avant-garde ideas about how things need to be taught, you know, and, and that fifth graders need to have a read aloud every morning. Are you crazy? <laughs> why would you why would you read to fifth graders every morning? Let's read to fifth graders after lunch when they're hyped after coming back from recess because that's when they're going to listen. They're not going to listen first thing in the morning. They could care less. Hmm. You know, it's like they don't, they, it's like they're not teaching our children. They're, you know, they're just uh, putting a teaching platform in place and saying, okay, well, we did this and we did this and we did this, but they're not doing it. They're not trying to reach our kids. Well, good thing they have you. So, uh, you know, you can make an impact where you, I do know. what I can. Yeah, you can. I do what I can, but I don't, I don't, I just see that this, this problem is way bigger than my pay grade. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's, um, you know, I just. Hello, somebody's speaking the truth. Yeah. yeah. It's Go it's I, it's like, everybody's it's unmuted. Like, you could just speak. Yeah. Um, you know, it's okay. like, it's like when you, when you when you when the old slave master used to, used to take the the slave and put him across the wheelbarrow mm -hmm. and whip him, mm -hmm. and at the same time tell him that don't hurt. It feels good. They keep right. whipping him. I ain't really, keep telling I us, ain't really hurt they keep, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they keep telling us, you know, we're not prejudiced, we're not racist, but yet you keep 
doing racist things. You know what I mean? And at the same time, I'm not supposed to be intelligent enough to know that this is what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's what gets me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, yeah, sick, sick world out there. I, yeah. so I'm starting to feed right now, so I, I, I'm a, I'm gonna digress a little bit. Let y'all yeah. talk. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to say there's always something we can do. Right now, oh, yeah. our children are suffering. They're suffering because they need our energy. They need our vibrations. Yeah. Uh, every time we need our presence. Home, our presence, that vibration, yeah. that one that goes back to the ancestors and come back and get pushed back into them. Mm-hmm. They need that. I care about you. Yeah. They need that from a black, from a black person or African or Nubian, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's just now they're on this distance learning, and it's not a good thing. No. Only if the parent makes that connection and only if the student knew the, the teacher before, it's kind of difficult. It's quite difficult. We'll try to go through the motions, but this social distancing and all this stuff, it has an effect yeah. on your psyche. And, I, and you know, the children, uh, teenagers, middle school, I've got one of them this week, and 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 you know, then my extended family, and 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 they're just like, I can't take it. Yeah, they're at the okay. Okay. That's, I'm gonna cut it off, but I just have uh, to say, I want to share something. We're gonna leave now. We're gonna tie this up, but there's a okay. Q and A that started at nine o'clock on Facebook. Born to Write Poet, and it addresses the issue of being the victim of creative theft. If you're interested. It's going Ooh. on on Facebook Live. It's called Born to Write Poet. Okay. You know, Born to Write Poet page. Okay. O R N T O W R I T E Poet page. This is okay. my friend, my poet friend in Lancaster. She just sent me this. What's her name? And she's addressing the issue of being the victim of creative theft. Mm. So that's going on right now at Facebook. Okay. Y'all might have another 20 minutes, all you poets out there, and I'll see you Thank next you. week. I give thanks for all the, making this happen. Yeah. We couldn't, as Thank you can you. see, we were small but mighty. Couldn't have had this without y'all showing up. Peace and love. I'm out. Thank you. What about you, Paul? Peace. Be well. Thank be you. safe. Enjoy this Memorial Day. Remember, I was telling my students this on yesterday. It's, it's, you're off work and you're out of school, but remember, this is a day to remember the brothers and sisters who fought in all of these wars on behalf of a country that continues to this day to oppress them. They died fighting for a country that denied their existence. So we have to remember that there are brothers and sisters in the military who was fighting um, in all of these wars. So let's just remember that on Monday. Let's think about our own who laid their lives down. That's right. Oni, can you read the name of that? It's called Born to Write. Uh, it's called, oh man, she just sent it to me. Hold on. It's called, um, it's called Born to Write Poet page. It's on Facebook Live. Okay. okay. Born to Write Poet page. What's her name? Uh, my friend is called Terry Durden. I'm not sure if it's her, but she just sent me a text on it. Born to Write Poet. Okay, right, good. Born to Write Poet page is on Facebook Live. It started at nine, and they're talking about the issue of being the victim of creative theft. All right, then. Thank you so All right. much. Love also, you Love you. make sure y'all sign up for absentee voting, please. Sign All right, up. Joshua, right yes, on. Yes. Nice to see you come back. Peace and love. Peace, y'all. Till we meet Peace. again, be safe. Love, Ron.